Imagine an alternate AFL reality where Tim Kelly plays for Fremantle, Caleb Sarong plays for Melbourne, Kaiseya Pickett plays for the Cats, and the Eagles have Chad Warner and Jai Amos on their list. Sounds bizarre, doesn't it? But in this video, I'm going to forecast the impact on several AFL teams in a world where Tim Kelly doesn't join the West Coast Eagles in 2019. So, in 2019, the Eagles traded picks 14, 24, 37, and a future first round pick to Geelong for Tim Kelly and some change. Much has been said of this deal, particularly in the West, and how the decision for West Coast to go after Kelly has ultimately backfired. At the time, there was three possible outcomes. He was going to join West Coast, join Fremantle, or stay at Geelong. So let's consider the latter two scenarios. First of all, let's consider a reality where Tim Kelly elects to stay at Geelong, rather than go home to WA at all. There's no doubt Kelly would have been an important player in their 2020 runner-up season, but given they lost to Richmond in the grand final by five goals, there's no guarantee he would have been the difference to winning a flag that year. Trading Tim Kelly gave Geelong the collateral to trade for GWS star Jeremy Cameron. Now in this alternative reality, it is impossible to rule out the possibility that Geelong may have still been able to trade for Cameron using other means, but Kelly leaving definitely made this simpler. There were also salary cap implications where Kelly would have garnered a big contract to stay at Geelong, which may have impacted their offer for Jeremy Cameron. The flow on effects for this are hard to track, and perhaps Geelong may have had to make some other hard contract calls on players to accommodate these two stars, if they had been successful in signing both. Given that the Cats would go on to win the 2022 Premiership with the help of Jeremy Cameron, they won't lose too much sleep over losing Tim Kelly. They would, however, have lost their access to Cooper Stevens, who they drafted with their first pick in 2019 from West Coast, but given he is now at Hawthorne, this probably doesn't matter. Realistically though, given his family situation, Tim Kelly was unlikely to stay in Geelong if West Coast had declined to trade for him. He needed to get back to Perth, and while he had expressed a strong preference to join West Coast, it is fairly likely that in this alternate reality, Tim Kelly would have joined the Fremantle Dockers. So, what does this reality look like? Fremantle had their own nominal pick 7 going into that 2019 trade period, and would also receive pick 10 as part of a deal that saw Brad Hill leave to St Kilda. They would later package pick 10 with some change to trade up to pick 8, probably with a view to getting an extra selection in before a bid for Academy prospect Liam Henry came. Now contemplating what Fremantle would have likely been able to offer to Geelong is tricky in hindsight, but it was certainly apparent their offer in terms of picks would have trumped West Coast had Kelly decided to sign with them, much to the frustration of the Cats. My best guess is that they would have done their best to hold on to their pick 7 to retain a pick before a Liam Henry Academy bid, so perhaps a deal involving 10 and a future first could have been possible. Given Kelly's likely contract of at least $800,000 a year, Two first round selections seems like the going rate for a trade, give or take. So in this scenario, Fremantle retain their pick 7 and still take Hayden Young, whilst also being able to match a Liam Henry bid with later picks. But it does mean their deal with Melbourne which saw both clubs swap their first pick, doesn't happen. In this scenario, it opens the door for the Ds to swoop on Caleb Sarong with their original pick 8. The Ds would also not have their pick 12 which allowed them to draft Kazaya Pickett. This pick would now belong to Geelong, who could have swept up the young small forward, but it's also possible he wouldn't have been their choice. Names like Will Day, Miles Bergman and Cody Waitman were also available, or they could have taken their original pick in Cooper Stevens again. Now let's look at the 2020 first round pick component of this trade. Fremantle's first selection fell at pick 14 because they incurred a points deficit in their Liam Henry bid. But their actual pick should have fallen at pick 9, which, don't forget, now belongs to the Cats. But let's assume the Cats still deal for Jeremy Cameron. This means that GWS are in a position to nab Archie Perkins with their first selection. It was definitely suggested that Perkins may have been unwilling to play outside of Victoria in his draft year, so it's possible that the Giants would instead select one of Zach Reed or Luke Pedler, or they may have just gone with their original pick in Tanner Braun anyway. So to summarize this segment of the alternate reality, if Geelong had traded Tim Kelly to Fremantle, the Cats may have ended up with one of Cozzy Pickett, Cody Waitman, Miles Bergman, or Will Day at their selection instead of Cooper Stevens, although they may have just picked Stevens. They would have almost certainly been able to still land Jeremy Cameron either way, and the Giants may or may not have picked Zach Reed instead of Tanner Bruin, but it's not certain. Fremantle would have come away with this with Tim Kelly, Hayden Young, and Liam Henry, but it would have come at the cost of both Caleb Sarong and Heath Chapman. 
And finally, the Demons could conceivably have Caleb Sarong on their list instead of Cozzy Pickett. But this is where we're starting to get into some deep waters with this alternate reality. If Fremantle had in fact signed Tim Kelly in 2019, it's entirely possible we would have seen them be an improved team from this moment. Now one player does not necessarily move the needle enough to see a massive improvement in ladder position, but it's interesting to consider that if the Dockers had finished higher in 2021, it could have also affected their access to star forward Jai Amos in that year's draft. So we've established that Tim Kelly joining Fremantle would have probably benefited Geelong and potentially GWS, while Fremantle are probably pleased this is not the path they went down in in 2019. It's now time to consider the West Coast perspective. It's difficult to speculate on who West Coast would have taken with pick 16 in the 2019 draft, where the Cats originally took Stevens. Subiaco forward Mitch Georgiatis was taken a couple of picks later to Port Adelaide, so he is probably my best guess. The next selection Geelong had here, they live traded to Gold Coast, who swooped on WA talent Jeremy Sharp. In this reality, West Coast hold this pick and could have easily done this deal themselves, given how lopsided it was in Geelong's favour. West Coast could have either taken Sharp themselves, they could have jumped on East Fremantle's Trent Rivers who was taken 5 picks later, or they could have live traded with Gold Coast. The pick Geelong traded for ended up at GWS in the Jeremy Cameron deal and they ended up selecting Connor Stone. If West Coast had indeed held this pick, they may have selected Stone themselves or perhaps they would have looked at such names as Ollie Henry, Finley McRae or Max Holmes. These picks would have been the best case scenario and it's tricky to decide on any one obvious pick there. There is another interesting subplot to this scenario too. West Coast did a side deal with Essendon for picks in the 30s and 50s to accommodate the Kelly deal. In this alternate reality, this deal may not have been necessary, which means West Coast may have held pick 38 at the time of the draft. Essendon took Nick Bryan with this selection, but if the Eagles had held it, there's a very good chance that they would have taken a pun on East Fremantle's Chad Warner. Geelong also took Francis Evans with pick 41, which was originally West Coast pick. Again, it's hard to speculate who the Eagles might have taken here. It could have been Ronan O'Connor from WA who went the pick after, but it's also possible that they would have just taken Callum Jamison, who they took at 49 anyway, given the even talent pool at this stage of the draft. Then there is West Coast's first pick in the 2020 draft to consider. Without Tim Kelly, the Eagles may have still finished fifth that year given they had a two game buffer on the next best team, so let's assume that this pick is in the same spot. This pick was held by the Giants on draft night and they selected Ryan Angwin. Again, the Eagles could have taken Angwin, or they could have taken Max Holmes, or even considered names such as Jake Bowie, Bailey Laurie, Braden Cook, or Nathan O'Driscoll. So, to summarise the West Coast portion of this complicated scenario, in the alternate reality where West Coast don't trade for Tim Kelly, the best possible scenario for West Coast would have seen access to Mitch Georgiatis, Trent Rivers, Chad Warner, and Max Holmes. I don't think the suggestions West Coast would have nailed all these picks with these players is realistic, but it was still nonetheless possible. But there are further flow on effects to consider. West Coast finished just 7% ahead of Fremantle in the 2021 season. If Fremantle had Tim Kelly in a season where he finished third in the Eagles best and fairest, it is conceivable that it would have been West Coast who drafted Jai Amos instead of Campbell Chesser that year. Or alternatively, they would have selected midfielder Neil Erasmus. So let's cover off this extensive alternative reality theory I think it's fair to make the following conclusions. Geelong ultimately benefited from Tim Kelly's desire to return home, although him joining Fremantle would have likely produced a better outcome for them on draft night. Fremantle are most likely pretty glad they missed out on Tim Kelly, despite their keen interest. It allowed them access to Caleb Sarong, Heath Chapman, and perhaps was even critical to them drafting Jai Amos. West Coast would no doubt be in a better position with respect to the youth on their list had they foregone Tim Kelly and the best possible realistic outcome for them would have seen them with Chad Warner and Jai Amos on their list. But with that all being said, I feel it's important to add some broader context to this analysis rather than just concluding that the Eagles stuffed up. While West Coast ultimately rolled the dice on Tim Kelly and it appears not to have paid off, there are two fundamental truths worth considering here. Firstly, given their premiership window was wide open at the time of this deal, being 12 months removed from a flag, Taking the risk on Tim Kelly was a no-brainer. The Eagles midfield was their weakest line in terms of talent, and Tim Kelly was an All-Australian midfielder who was younger than what we had at the time, in Luke Shuey, Elliot Yeo, Andrew Gaff, and Jack Redden. There's no doubt the trade has not paid off, 
but every club in the league would have made the same decision had they been in that position. You could technically make the claim that any club in contention who has traded for a big player, who then failed to win a premiership, is guilty of making a bad trade. And while that might be technically true in hindsight, it's not a strong argument against clubs taking these risks in the moment of their premiership window, as ultimately, premierships are the thing that matter the most. The criticism the Eagles would have copped had they declined Tim Kelly only to fall down the ladder would have been equally strong. My personal take is that the Eagles should have always done the deal, but were overly generous at the trade table. The fact that this deal was done on day two of that trade period speaks to that claim. Kelly was always going to cost at least two first rounders, but I've perhaps liked them to have kept at least one of 24 or 33 in the 2019 draft. Had they held firmer on this deal, Chad Warner could well be an Eagle. But on balance, it is entirely possible that they would have just selected someone else anyway. The second fundamental truth to remember is that the trade for Tim Kelly has very little, if anything, to do with West Coast's sharp decline over the last three years. I've done another video trying to cover this topic as best as I can, but an outdated game style, declining veterans, and other list management decisions over time were compounded by a never-before-seen injury list to ultimately leave West Coast in the mess they're in. Now there's no doubt the Eagles would be better placed with some of these young guns on their list going forward, but Tim Kelly in isolation has been one of the few aspects of this current Eagles side that seems to be working. But there you go guys, that's just my take on this alternative reality in which Tim Kelly does not join the West Coast Eagles. Let me know your thoughts below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.